welcome to Slash Tracks Action News, episode number five. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. That's pretty good. Uh, didn't talk over each other this time either, this time, huh? Yeah, we didn't talk over each other this time. That That's, uh, that's a step up. That is a step it's up. It's really good when we don't talk. Oh, oh, oh. We just did it right there. Son of a <laughs> bitch. Uh, let's just, there's an elephant in the room right now that we need to address before we even get into anything to, in tonight's jam-packed episode. By the way, Slashaholics, this episode is jam-packed with a lot of stories. A lot of stuff happened since episode number four. So you guys are in for a treat. Josh, will you please let the Slashaholics know how many views... The, our Slash Tracks episodes have been getting lately. Thousands. Thousands of views. We have uh, the Halloween episode is up to over 20,000. We've got the Child's Play 3 episode close to 15. YouTube is recommending us. It's getting out there. The word's spreading. The podcast is doing amazing. The last episode is, what is it, 4,000, 5,000? The new ep- episode number four is almost to 4,000 views, and episode number three is at... 3,100 views, episode number two is like at 3,000, and episode one is falling way behind with like 1,400, but, uh, and even episodes of Good Times, um, which I'll answer a question that was in the comments right now, Uh, no, Ryan is not in any of the Good Times episodes that are on the uh, 80 Slasher Librarians, the Slash Track Network's YouTube channel, the only episodes that are on our channel are the ones where Josh and I are hosting, excuse me. Uh, Ryan and I had done 70, 70 some odd previous episodes. And if you guys are interested at all, they're on Spotify, Apple podcasts. Uh, they're also on YouTube, uh, anywhere you can find your podcast. They're there. Um, Ryan's there, but, uh, I'm going to warn you right now. They're not as much, uh, fun as the ones that are on the channel with Josh and I, it's just a completely different vibe. Uh, but they are there. So if you want to check them out, check them out. Not as sexy. Yeah, not as sexy. I'm pretty sexy. Ryan's a pretty sexy guy, but not as sexy. Just giving him a hard time. <clears throat> uh, we'll put a link in the description below uh, if you want to check out the podcast episodes that he mentioned. We have a new segment uh, that's going to be at the top of each episode Yeah, called the um, Mean Comments of the Week, right? Yeah, Mean Comments of the Week and Nice Comment of the Week. We're going to have a little yin and yang Okay. And the reason I ask you, Josh, to address the elephant in the room was because um, with that many views comes a lot of comments. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't prepared, I guess, uh, for the amount of like really nice, positive comments that were going to come our way. But I also wasn't prepared <laughs> for the amount of mean comments that were going to come our way. And... Uh, Hey man, I coughed twice. I've cleared my throat twice tonight. So like Sanford Lyle on Along Came Polly, uh, I can, can't wait to read those comments about how I'm a <laughs> filthy pig or something. Clear my throat on air. That'll be great. Can't wait to do the podcast with COVID. Yeah, no, I just, ask. I just wasn't re- quite ready to just be ripped apart. But you know, more views comes more eyeballs on your product. Obviously, it's the same exact same exact thing. It's exciting. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we're just happy you're watching. We're happy you're commenting. And if you're saying mean stuff, whatever. You said something. Thanks for helping the algorithm. Appreciate it. It might get you on the show. Who knows? Let's yeah, see. actually, one of them is going to be on the show. And since you brought it up, uh, Fun Facts is going to be the second segment of the night. We normally start with Fun Facts. This is a brand new segment, Josh. What's it called? What, what should we call it? The the good 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 comment, bad comment? Good good. Yeah, good comment, bad comment of the week. Good, good comment, bad comment of the week. All right. And, uh, so, like, I'm in the Fort Smith studio. As you can tell, this is a real new studio behind me. Totally and, legit. And uh, you're in the Oregon studio over there. I'm in the Eugene, Oregon branch of the Slash Tracks uh, audiovisual network. <laughs> you got, you got a better studio over there. Uh, the quality is amazing. We have the double uh-huh. dare colors. I'm on the red team. You're on the blue team. <laughs> So who's going to be the good cop? Who's going to be the bad cop? Which one of us? Uh, you go ahead. Let's start out. You go ahead and give the bad comment of the week. Okay. Can I do a voice for it and everything the way I picture? Whatever you want. This is a brand new segment. Go ahead. And, you know, maybe I'll put I'll put it on the screen when I'm editing this. Um, the comment. I don't have the name in front of me, but this is how I pictured him saying it. Commentary by two nobodies. That was on a Slash Tracks episode. 
Um, yeah, I, I saw that, Josh, and you had mentioned it to me that you had saw it, and I was like, we're going to... When I brought it up, I was like, that's definitely a mean tweet sort of thing, bad comment of the week. So I would have attributed the comment to him, but his name was like 10 names long, <laughs> and I would have butchered it. I have no idea where people come up with these stupid YouTube names. Uh, Can I say the reply that I gave to it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did reply to it and said, wow, oh my God, how did you know our original idea for the name of Slash Tracks? Thanks for commentary. watching. And then I said, I said, actually, that's such a good idea that we should actually put it on some merch for the future. <laughs> yes. Two nobodies so, commentating yeah, so, on movies. Yeah, two nobodies. That could be a new show. I mean, instead of Trash Tracks, the Lifetime movies that we're going to do, let's just shoot two nobodies. Uh, Com two com commentary by two nobodies. <laughs> if my mom was still alive, oh my God, and she read that comment, she'd tell them something because my mom, she definitely thought I was somebody. So I don't appreciate that. So thank God, Mom, Mama. Thank God, Mama Alex isn't around to read that one. Okay. Yeah, that ten long name it. would be getting an ass whooping. Yeah, and, and he, you know what? She knocked it down to eight names. Dude, dude, people would never say that to our faces. I mean, yeah. Everybody, listen. If you're gonna if you're gonna go through life and you're gonna because uh, what we're doing here, we're doing this because it's fun. Number one, we do it if we had nobody watching. At least I know I would. Uh, would you do the same thing, Josh? Oh yeah, it's yeah, fun. I always said. Time. I always said, like, with my narrations, I've had some trolls on there. When I first started the, the channel doing narrations, I had this guy that would literally comment, why make a channel where you're reading books? People can read books themselves. And it's like, this is the stupidest idea for a channel, and yada, yada, yada. There's always going to be trolls. And it's like, you know, you're, the point of the channel is I'm narrating books, so you don't have to go pay, like, $500 to read it, because that's how much Yeah, you're doing us. You're doing a public service to these people in the internet world, so you're doing the Lord's work right now, so that guy can just shove that comment straight up his candy ass. If you don't like something, just go on, you know? Go. I was going to say, I was going to say, first of all, they, he would never say this to my face, okay? And I'm not some badass, but I'm not somebody that you're going to say something like that to, first of all. And number two, those that can't always like to comment on those that do, so... Yes. We do the show because we have a good time. It's fun. And if you guys enjoy it, which a lot of you guys do enjoy it, thank you so much. And uh, Josh and I, we're going to toughen up. We're going to put out a hell of an episode. It's jam-packed tonight. That guy got the first ever mean comment of the week award. And you know what he can do? He can take that award, turn that some bitch sideways, shine it up real nice, and what do what with it, Josh? Shove it straight up his candy ass. Absolutely. And uh, you know what? In every mean comment, there's a good comment of the week. And I... Being in the double dare red side of the country, I am going to tell you the good comment of the night. What do we got? Somebody, actually, I think I even got his name. Uh, good comment of the week. Great range of topics for the podcast. Absolutely no filler. And his name is uh, Raven Kavadov. Raven Kavadov. So Raven Kavadov, uh, the eighty slasher librarian Josh Larue, and I, Alex Vanover, we salute you. Thank you. Thank you for the nice comment. And you know what? You're welcome back anytime you want to come <laughs> come near anything that has anything to do with the Slashaholics or the Slashaholics Network or the or you're you're a VIP member from now on, buddy. VIP. Yeah, and if yeah. you ever want to watch our other show, which is called Commentary by Two Nobodies or <laughs> Slash Tracks, come on over and check that out too. <laughs> commentary, sure commentary by Two Fucking Losers. Uh, <laughs> come on and yeah, because we were tossing that name around too. Check check us out. Josh, I'm ready to have some fun. Do you Let's want to get into some fun? Yes. Let's get into some fun facts. Episode number five, fun facts of the week. The female world record for the most orgasms in an hour, Josh, is 134. You interviewed the male record, record, didn't you? 134 for one hour. The when, did male record, to, when, did you get to, when did you get a chance to interview my wife, though? Oh, <laughs> yeah. She's over in the corner right now while you're filming, just trembling, dying. <laughs> She needs, she's dehydrated, absolutely, completely dehydrated, huh? So what's the male record, too? The male, no, the male record is 16. Wow, okay. Who's the guy, the, the guy at Guinness uh, that has to go and keep track of these things must be the lowest 
lowest man on the totem pole for Guinness. They're like, somebody's trying to break the orgasm record again. Send Steve over there with the stopwatch and the freaking little abacus or whatever you count the orgasms with. I don't even know how you would establish that it's a proper orgasm. How did, how does he know they're not faking? Because if the guy in particular, okay, says he had 16 orgasms, there's nothing coming out. By the 16th one, it probably looks like a genie. Yeah, dust. It looks like a genie is coming out of the lamp. There's it reminds me of that movie where these guys, I can't, it's some horror movie uh, where like they hook the guys up to like a cow milking machine or something. Or, and like the, and it's like it's like torture, you know. It's like sixteen. No, thank you. <laughs> it's at that point, no. You uh, would just feel like you would. I feel like you. There would be nothing that would come out. You'd be having orgasms that had nothing. Like hopes and prayers would be coming out of that penis by the end of that. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, is there like feuds between the old? Oh, I gotta be careful. I can't. We can't laugh at our own jokes either. Um, yeah, well, yeah, the, yeah. Don't, don't you dare. La- Listen, I know it's a shock to some of the people in the comments. We're actually not in front of a live studio audience, so we are actually, you know, Josh doesn't know the rundown before we do the show. So if he's laughing at something on the rundown, it's because he's hearing it for the first time. Okay, and if I'm laughing, it's because I'm a no talent hack who does laugh at his own jokes. <laughs> What was a, a it's it's like Stefan on SNL. Remember that with Bill Hader. You know, if you want to go to the greatest club in New York and all, he's always great. It's because they would like write that skit and practice it, and then the writers would change everything for the live show before he would go out on Weekend Update. So do different things, and he'd break people on the set. Yes, it would break Bill Hader every time playing Stefan because they would add shit that he didn't know was going to be there. I have no idea what's coming. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm laughing. I remember on SNL when they used to like, cause sometimes me and you will start laughing at our crap. And I just remember some of the funniest things that I saw on SNL were when Jimmy Fallon and Horatio Sands would be cracking each other up on a live episode. They couldn't even get through their lines. I thought that was funnier than some of the stuff they were doing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the fun thing about slash tracks. When we do the commentary, we don't write our riffs ahead of time. Like some mm-hmm. other people do, even though I do like those people and I love their product. Me too. Uh, uh, but we don't write our riffs. It's all firsthand, and that's why we catch each other off guard a lot, and we crack up at that uh, because it's it's on the spot. It's just we can't help it. We're 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 people too, and we have a great sense of humor. Well, I was so. gonna say I was gonna say part of the appeal of slash tracks before we ever even started slash tracks for watching the horror movies and riffing was I w- I like the idea of of an honest in the moment reaction to what we're watching in live actual time. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's more natural. I feel like the movie going experience, that's more like the way it is with your friends when you're watching a movie in your living room at your house or at your buddy's house, or you're at the theater, you'll make comments in the previews. Um, if it's too cleaned up and too, uh, you know, too professional, it just comes across as, Kind of, kind of like a little phony, maybe. I don't know if I don't know if phony is the word. It's just not as genuine to the actual movie going experience that yeah. I was kind of like shooting for. It's fun with Mystery Science Theater, but like I think with us, I don't think we would have been at twenty six episodes. We would have got so tired of trying to like watch the movie, write out a whole script. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's just it's just so much more fun this way. And sometimes we hit, sometimes we miss. I got in trouble from a commentator. Or from a comment on one of the videos, not going to go into detail. But yeah, it's it's not perfect. Um, I was going to ask you though: Is there a feud between the recent, the past record holders in the orgasm department and the new ones? Like, is this like a do they have like a competition? You know, once a year they travel to. <laughs> is there like is there like you know like the weightlifting, the power men thing where they have to like lift the boulders up onto the stands the and first, stuff? The first thing that I thought of when you said that was the King of Kong. The documentary about Billy Mitchell and Steve Wiebe when they're going for the Donkey Kong record. I love that. Um, and like, what if the guy who has the the previous orgasm record is like sending in 
videos of like fake orgasms. Uh, and he's got he's got like a little trolley guy, like Billy Mitchell did, you know, calling. Yeah, this yeah. dude's about to have a perfect, a perfect, a perfect screw, man. That's eighteen <laughs> orgasms. You know, everybody's watching the tape. Well, tape the, video the, tape. <laughs> the tape that Billy Mitchell sends in is all like VHS quality, grainy, and it's like mm-hmm. shaking and moving on the screen where he like cut it. You know. He's cheating on the on the nutting the orgasm day. And by the way, anybody that's ever seen that and did not know, they proved that videotape he sent in in the documentary was fake, as as, as well as many other ones. He was playing them on like emulators on a computer, and every score that he's ever had, every record he's ever broken, has been deleted from the history books and taken down, completely gone. Billy Mitchell, the villain was completely taken down from the record books and all of his high scores, even the ones he earned legitimately because of his cheating, do not exist. Couldn't have so happened that, to a nicer guy. Uh, so Steve Wiebe is officially the first person to break a million points in Donkey Kong. He will hold that record now. Have you ever played Donkey Kong before? Yeah. Uh, really uh, hard. Yeah. I've never got the damn pie factory level. I guess you have to play on certain machines to get that. It's so I you know I've gotten to the sixth or seventh screen. It is really hard. Some of those levels are ridiculously hard. You have to like decide when you're going to use the hammer correctly or when you should use it. You get jumping barrels. Sometimes the barrels are completely random. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that game. It's really hard. So if you're good at Donkey Kong, that's amazing because it's not an easy game to play. You know what, what else got- is in? Well, oh, go ahead. Oh, you were you know setting what? it up. You're setting no, it up. No, I was going to say, you know what else isn't easy? What's that? Getting away from a cow. Because cows oh. kill more people every year than sharks. Does it have to be living cows? Like, can does people choking on a hamburger count? Or, like, food poisoning? I don't know that they took into account how <laughs> many cows that were consumed that killed the human being. I think it's a live cow killing a human being. I can... I can see people being killed by cows, but like like in rodeos or training for rodeos or uh, mm-hmm. trying to hurt them, but they're not. <laughs> you're not gonna be like walking in the field and it's like moo 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 like get attacked by a cow or something. You know, you know what kills more people than anything in Alaska is moose. They're, they're, they're bad, man. They're bad motherfuckers. Mo- like, there's a video on the internet where this guy is, like, going out to his mailbox or something, or is getting his newspaper, and this moose is just mean to, like, you know, staring him down, and the <laughs> moose attacks him, like, charges him, and the guy gets away just in time, but moose are no joke. They kill a lot of people in Alaska. Can I what? give a little cute moment? Look up a video... There's this woman on the back back porch, I think it's in Alaska or somewhere like that, and she's got her baby with her, and the baby starts crying, and this mama deer comes running out of the woods, like coming to check on the baby. It is like one of the cutest things in the world. You talk about moose being evil, deer aren't as evil apparently, so I'm trying to yin and yang that too. Yeah, but uh, deer, are, deer are delicious. <laughs> Especially when you cook them. Yeah, that's, so why, <laughs> that's why they're comp. That's why they're compensating so much. They're they, they're trying to be overly nice so they don't get savagely murdered uh, for their meat. Oh wait, the producers are telling me something. Okay, uh, we've just been told that we're not that we're cutting the uh, record number of deer orgasm stories from tonight's format. <laughs> so we're gonna have to move on to the fun fact after that one. Okay, so we're <laughs> so sharks. You're losing the cows. Uh, we just had orgasm records, uh, in France, Josh, you can legally marry a dead person. Oh, wow. Wow. You can do that in America too. Melania did it. Oh man. It only took 11 minutes to get Trump into this episode, ladies and gentlemen. And if we were on Captain Kangaroo, we would all be hit with ping pong balls right now. Josh finally got a Trump reference in. He looks like he's been made up by an undertaker. That's all I was going to say. That's all I was going to say. It looks like, like funeral makeup, but no, oh, seriously. <laughs> I wanted to know how cows kill people. How do cows kill people first? I don't know. Charging, probably charge them, probably bull, pro- running with the bulls. Probably, It's probably not cows. It's probably bulls. So in this country, 
can you marry somebody that was killed by a cow in America? No, but the guy in France, if he was killed in Spain running with the bulls and that he took the body to France, he could marry the said okay. dead person. See, it all, it all, it all comes around. What are, you, what are you marrying a dead person for anyway? Their money? Like, what or what? What's the thought process there? You're I like guess a girl. people's been with so many people that were cold-hearted that they just got used to it, and that's the only thing that would do it for them. Well, hold on. They're like, well, I've been, I've been shut down by this female her entire life. She can't say no now. <laughs> She's not going to say no now. Because what of the implication. What the hell are you doing with your life if you're marrying a dead person? Did somebody has, has people married actually married dead people in in France? I don't I don't know the exact events that happened, but if there's a fun fact that's reported that you can marry a dead person, then yeah, it's probably happened. Speak now or forever hold your embalming fluid. <laughs> you know, speak speak now or forever hold your peace. Can the, can a dead person also be the witness for the <laughs> wedding? She's never going to be. We need we need we need a field reporter to go cover these stories for us. Somebody out in the field in France, or at least in front of a green screen with the tower behind them or something, and and finding these things out for us. We we need a field reporter for Slash Tracks Action News. Uh, fill your application out below. Yeah, and <laughs> and the nicer the comment, the better chance you have of becoming our field reporter, and also the meaner the comment the better chance you have of becoming our field reporter. <laughs> hey, um, did you know that in Texas, and this is, this is going to, you live close to Texas, kind of. I'm like so, right on top of Texas. And yeah, this is going to be a blow to you. Uh, in Texas, it is illegal for a person to own or use more than six dildos. Oh, wow. That affects you personally. Especially if you're trying to break the orgasm world record. Yeah, you told me that, you told me that your significant other actually just broke the record. I don't. I can't remember if you said on the show or if you said before we were filming. No, I said. I said, did you interview her? Because I'm the one that did that. It was. I heard I, a lot of. It sounded like you had a bunch of old Nokia cell phones going off at the same time. I, no, there was none of that in use. It was all me. Yeah, that's 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 what I meant with that. Joke. I'm sure. If you she's trying, if you and her are trying to set the orgasm record, you probably had like seven or eight dildos strapped to a hard hat. <laughs> and you and since you're at the double dare facility, you probably had the knee pads, the the elbow pads. You had dildos strapped to the elbow pads, the knee pads. You the, deleted like a, ep- the deleted you look, episode of Bob the Builder. <laughs> you're a former wrestler, right? You probably had the Legion of Doom pads, but instead of spikes, it just had dildos all over them. <laughs> Not in Texas, though. You can't do that in Texas. Yeah, you can't have... So if he's wrestling in Texas and he's the Legion of Dildos, like he's part of that tag team, <laughs> he can only have six of those dildos on his football pads. The Legion of Dildos. I thought they called that the uh, well, the Main Street Posse. I was just going to say it was the it was Joey Gass and Pete... No, Pete Gass and Joey Abs. Is that what their names were? We, we're, 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 we think alike. That's... Yeah, well, we Main Street chemistry here. Speaking of the Mean Street Posse, Shane McMahon's uh, son just uh, accepted a scholarship to play university or to play football for the University of Indiana this week. Oh wow! So that's kind of cool. That whole McMahon family—they—they're not only billionaires, but they're also highly talented and good at uh, sports too. So just not good at taking stunners at eighty years old. <laughs> yeah, I know. Vince McMahon WrestleMania was this last weekend, and Vince McMahon. Uh, tried to take a stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin on day two of WrestleMania on Sunday. But his quads blew out and he started to fall over. He got my- kicked. <laughs> the stunner, you get kicked in the gut, you bend over, and you take the stunner bump. So you, he, Stone Cold pulls you in from the kick, you, you're bent over, and he puts you in his arm and drops down to his ass. Well, when he kicked Vince McMahon, Vince immediately dropped to his knees Stone Cold was trying to pull him back in, but so Vince went back to the ropes because he realized he screwed up, and then Stone Cold couldn't get a hold of him because Vince was awkwardly going against the ropes. The whole thing was awful looking. Michael Cole or whoever is doing commentary, I don't even know their names anymore, was like, Vince is trying to get away. <laughs> yeah, Vince Vince is finally trying to get away from the stunner after 30 years of taking that bump. Dude, he, Vince McMahon looks, looks like warmed over shit in the face. He looks like he's already dead. Like, he's married to some woman in France, and 
they, he still took a stunner. So I got to hand it to him. Uh, he's 80 years old, and at least at least he took some some form of a bump. And I'm glad Stone Cold won because I'm all about the older talent putting the younger talent over. But this was a situation where it had to be Stone Cold going over. There, it wasn't going to work the other way. He hadn't, wrestled years old, but. he hadn't wrestled in 19 years. The he last did good. Match, he looked he looked good. Um, the thing with Stone Cold is that he's always kept himself in really good shape, and he um, his look. Part of his whole thing is he had a bald head, so you can't tell that he lost hair, right? So he looks the same. He's still fit, and he always had the goatee. So he looked he looked exactly the same as he did 19 years ago. I actually wrote something down in case you brought up WrestleMania and Stone Cold tonight. I actually did wrote something down. Um, Stone Cold did an interview saying he was thinking about Jerry Lawler throughout the uh, wrestling match. Have you heard about this already? No. After the match was over, he went back to Jerry Lawler and told him, said, I was thinking about you out there. He's like, I, I get it now. I get while you're, why, even at your age, you're still out there wrestling indie shows. It's fun as hell. Like, Stone Cold gets it. Like, he, he's, he said in the past, he doesn't understand how these guys, older guys, are out there wrestling still constantly. Like, uh, and he... He did it, and now he's got the bug again. I wouldn't doubt if we, uh, if that didn't end up being his final match. Well, there's nowhere. So Scott Hall, who we talked about on episode number four, you know, he recently passed, NWO founding member and Razor Ramon and stuff. He on on this on many interviews, Scott Hall would say that wrestling was the biggest high he ever got, like going out in front of a live audience. And he, oh, I agree. Yeah, and he would say when he would go back in the locker room. It was a feeling that you, he couldn't replace, so he was like chasing that feeling with other things. So that that didn't help his substance abuse. It's not it's it's not an excuse for what he did, but no, I totally uh, get it. Yeah, he was like chasing that same high from wrestling in front of a live audience. I was never in WWE or any big company, but I did travel around and I've had hundreds of matches in, a ten, in that ten year period. And this is a testament to how much I enjoy Slash Tracks and the podcast here. Uh, after a show, you don't come down for like 24 hours. You don't sleep that night. You're just you're amped up. And that's how I am after we do a production of the podcast or Slash Tracks. So I get trying to chase that because when I, when I got my back injured and I couldn't do it anymore, it took me like eight years to find something. And I had addiction problems afterwards. Uh, the, the back injury started that I'm, I'm yeah. not ashamed. I've talked about it before. I've been sober off of pain pills for 12 years. Um, but I get the chasing it. Um, the channel narrating books at first was something that's, uh, really helped me fill that gap that I had from wrestling. Mm -hmm. And now this, this, the podcast and uh, <clears throat> slash tracks does it, does that for me tenfold. I've never felt, that feeling like I did after a wrestling show until I've worked with you on these shows. So there's have, your sentimental moment of the night. Uh, I have that effect on grown men all the time. <laughs> I was trying to be all sentimental. And, uh, um, but yeah, let's go. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that big time. And I, on that same thing, before we go to the last fun fact, when I first uh, was introduced to you through the channel, I so when I go to bed at night, I'm like anybody else. I'll listen to like true crime documentaries. I'll listen to books on tape. I'll listen to whatever. And I remember coming across. Um, I can't remember if it was Dream Spawn, the the Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, it was the one where. Oh, excuse me. It was the one where Freddy Krueger. Like there was a video game. The Dream Dealers, my favorite. Yeah, the, the Dream Dealers. Uh, it was like Freddy Krueger was in a video game. Uh, yeah. And I remember hearing the production that you would put on your channel and like it had the Nightmare on Elm Street music in the background. It had you doing Freddie's voice. Um, it had all the bells and whistles. And I just remember thinking like, wow, like this guy is passionate about what he's doing. I, re I would really like to talk to this guy. So I you could feel the passion for your stuff coming out of the the reading. It was incredible. Yeah, it was big time. I, I caught that from the first time I heard you doing a, a book. 
I've always wanted to be an entertainer in one way or another. If I can't wrestle, I really enjoy doing the books. And as much as I love the books, I love doing this so much more. Yeah. So, um, thank you for finding the channel, reaching out to me. This has been a blast. Well, we both have backgrounds in, enter- in entertainment. Like yeah. I worked, I, I was an on-air host and a producer for Fox Sports Radio for three or four years. Uh, so, you know, I have a history in podcast on air radio, but I also, not a lot of people know this in a past life, I did stand up comedy. So a lot of the riff riff stuff, a lot of the jokes we say on the show. Uh, one of my things when I did stand up, uh, I would have a rundown sheet kind of like what we have for the podcast, but I didn't have jokes written. I would have bullet points that I wanted to get to that I wanted to talk about. And I would just read the audience and feel it. And more times than not, I would kill. I'd be very good. But, you know, sometimes I'd suck. You know, we'd have a, we would have, you know, a redneck zombie situation or a, <laughs> or a, um, there was, what episode was it? It was the dentist. What's his name? What one was that? Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles. Somebody said, was Alex phoning in this, <laughs> this episode? And it's like, I wasn't phoning it in. I just, uh. We had done two, we did two back-to-back episodes. Yeah, we, we did two back-to-back slow. episodes that night. So not a lot of people know that. Sometimes you do back-to-back things. But also, sometimes nothing comes to you. Sometimes the movie's better than you think it's going to be. And yeah. you don't want to rip it apart. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of the, so we have, well, anyway, the point, <laughs> I don't even know what my point is anymore. The point is we both have histories in entertaining people and we if we didn't like doing it and we didn't get a you know uh enjoyment out of it we wouldn't do it so exactly and we appreciate everybody that listens and watches so yeah should and, we get into the last fun fact uh yeah yeah let's do it okay all right last fun fact of the night in singapore everyone above the age of 11 is automatically registered as an organ donor excuse me not 11 21 slash tracks correction Everyone over the age of 21 is automatically registered as an organ donor. People who opt out of the program are giving lower lower priority for organ transplants in the future should they ever need one. Oh, wow. I, I don't know how I feel about that one. Um, uh, what do you mean? Why, why do you... Why? I'm, an, or, I'm an organ donor myself. Like, I'm okay. My license. Like, I, I get the whole, like, freedom of choice thing, but at the same time... God, I don't want to sound like a dictator or something here, but, like, if you're not willing to offer up your organs, if you were to die to save somebody else's life, then I kind of understand getting put lower on the list, you know? I I kind of agree with, with Singapore. And also, um, my mom passed away from liver failure uh, many years ago, and she was on the organ donor list. She was really low priority. Um, and I remember Mickey Mantle, who was a former big-time Yankees baseball great, all-time great outfielder. He got cancer of the liver, and he had to have his liver replaced. And I remember he got a liver transplant, like, the next week. And I remember thinking to myself, even as a kid, I was like, this is fucked. Like, is. this guy's getting a liver transplant, like, the next week because he's Mickey Mantle. And then here's my mother just dying in the bedroom back here. I just remember having that thought as like an 11 year old and realizing that it wasn't fair. Um, so I kind of so, like what Singapore's doing. Yeah, I kind of like that. A little more, yeah, it's a little more fair, right? Yeah. So who knows? I mean, but you know what? It's always the same thing. If you, that if you have money, you're gonna get you're gonna get things quicker. You're gonna get better things. It's it's just the way it is. It's the way the world is, man. In the back of my mind, I worry about that because uh, I've got. I'm not going to go into big detail on air about it, but I've got some liver problems myself and my father does too. And, uh, that, you know, I wish, I wish, I wish we had a system a little more like that, honestly. Um, cause it's not fair. It's in America. It's the dollar talks, man. And it's just crazy. It's crazy. Cause it all started with shiny rocks in the ground. And now it's what chooses life and death. Whoever has the most shiny rocks, Gets the organ, apparently. Well, you know what that tells me is we need more shiny rocks. <laughs> let's go digging. So in the podcast, let's go. We got to go find some more shiny rocks immediately. Um, Josh, let's get into everyone's favorite part of the show. Let's get into Slash Track Sports. Let's do it. 
Let's do it, bud. You're about ready to take the physical challenge over there at Blue Double Dare Studios. Wake uh, your monkey ass up. <laughs> what do we got? All right. Uh, New York Mets pitcher Max Scherzer. His salary is actually greater than six franch or <laughs> than six MLB franchises. Some of those franchises would be the Oakland A's, the Baltimore Orioles, and a few others. Uh, so this one player makes more money by himself than some entire major league teams combined. What are your thoughts on this? I, I don't understand why these guys make so much money to begin with and why so many so many people who are struggling are so gung-ho to just dish out their money to make these people richer. <laughs> I mean, go, 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 go become a fan of your local high school football team. What's the difference? Bet on them. It's because, well, they make the money because the league is generating the money. And it's all, and it, a lot of the NFL in particular, the NFL is the most popular sport in America. I mean, it's without a doubt, it is the most popular sport. Has a lot to do with gambling, has a lot to do with diehard fans. Um, some people deck out their entire house with, you know, Cowboys stuff or Raiders stuff, whatever. Rabid fan bases. But should, should Max Scherzer, the Mets pitcher, be making $43 million? No. Should he be making more than the entire Oakland A's team? <laughs> no. That's ridiculous. Um, I don't think any professional <clears throat> sports should be making more than a couple million a year, honestly. It just blows my mind. It just blows my mind. So many that, people deserve to get paid. So, teachers deserve to make millions a year, in my opinion. Uh, nurses d- d- deserve to make millions a year, in my opinion. Football players, baseball players... They're like way down the list. Back in the day, like in the 40s and 50s, even the 60s, professional athletes would have uh, jobs in the off season. They'd have actual jobs. So like some of the guys would drive truck when the football season wasn't going on. Some people would sell shoes. Some people would work at like a grocery store. So you'd go to a Packers game or something and the season's over. You'd see the defensive tackle bagging your groceries. This happened. This is a real thing. That's the way it should be. They shouldn't. They should not be making that much money. Uh, it's just crazy. It, they, it's just crazy. The people sitting on the bench that don't even play, that don't even play in the games, are making more than a teacher or a nurse. And these nurses, man, throughout the pandemic, it's, it's just, it's just, it just. Maybe that's my problem with sports. There's nothing wrong with sports. If anybody wants to comment that, we're not, you know. I'm just not, I've never been a big sports guy. Uh, it's nothing personal. Um, the best, dude, the best job in professional sports is the backup quarterback in the NFL. You don't have to play. You just go to practice. You're just there in case of emergency. You're behind make, a big, yeah, and you make millions. And you're just like behind a big pane of glass, like a like a fire extinguisher. They only break you open. They only They only need you in case of something really bad happening. Otherwise, you're not doing nothing. Have you watched Young Rock yet? I've seen like two or three episodes of Young Rock. It's it's getting it's really good. Like I I've been watching season two. I need to watch the whole thing. Um, but like he when it it's covering his time in the Canadian Football League, and he was like really good at football. But when he got up there, the rules are just nuts, you know, compared to America football. Yeah, which, which should be called handball and you know soccer, football, whatever. Anyways, watch Young Rock, man. If you're a re- you're a wrestling fan, you'll love that show. Um, but um, I was gonna say, eventually, I feel like football is gonna the rules are gonna change because all the concussions and uh, the trouble these players are having as they get older. I feel like we're heading towards a time where they're gonna like really tone down sports. You like Demolition Man? <laughs> you yeah. like abolish certain sports? Um, yeah, I feel like that that can the the world we live in right now that could that could be it. Then again, the world we we live in right now we could be halfway through this episode and then a mushroom cloud is like right behind us. So who knows? Uh, Don't say that kind of crap. <laughs> hey, uh, I was gonna say before we go into the next sports story, um, football in general. There, uh, people, high school football teams in my area are having a hard time even fielding teams because a lot just the pandemic isn't helping things. But there's a lot of parents who aren't allowing their kids to play football anymore because they don't want them to have, you know, CTE or head injuries or whatever later down, you know, down the road. So they're they're pushing them to non 
contact sports like e-sports. baseball, basketball, oh. esports. I mean that dude during the pandemic on Fox Sports Radio when I was working there, uh, the rise of esports. We had a bunch of video gamers. Uh, we interviewed esports athletes on the show on Fox Sports Radio. We were interviewing esports gamers. Wow, yeah, like they're doing that at <clears throat> schools now. Uh, my kids are in, in enrolled in esports, like Minecraft, yeah. Fortnite, and stuff. Um, yeah. But the, somebody brought this up to me one time, and I never looked at it this way because I, I don't have a problem with. I didn't have a problem with like little league football and stuff. I have more of a problem with the parents at little league games than I do because they're play. living vicariously through their kids. Exactly, and they're like yelling. It's like shut up and let your kid have fun. Uh, but like, let's say football never existed. Right? Nobody's ever the game of football. No NFL. No XFL. I don't want to imagine a world like this. Let's not do that. Hold on, hold on. And my daughter's stepping in. Looks good. She just made a Mr. Abaddon. She made her own puppet there. Ah, thank you. <laughs> uh, just imagine a world without football. And somebody comes up to you at school, a coach. He wants to have your kid join this new this new sport he's made up and they describe to you what football is the tackling and all that and most parents would be like no no you're not no my kid's not going to do that yeah but it's because we're just used to it you know it's it's been around for so long but if, if it wasn't and it was brought up now people would call you crazy for wanting to go out there and do it dude every every play is like a car crash like a small level car crash and that's that's wrestling too. Every every wrestling match is like being in a car wreck. Every wrestling match that I ever did the next morning, I'm like, why the hell do I do this? I'm not making that much money, you know. But it's it's for it's you get you get a rush from entertainment, entertainment, playing the character. Yeah. And I, I you know I guess the sports players are the same way. I don't disrespect them. I just it's never been a big thing of mine. I'm not, and the reason I'm explaining that so much is because somebody's like, what's wrong with sports? I'm not, there's nothing wrong with sports. Uh, okay. It's just kind of like a little joke, you know? You know what they're, you know what is <laughs> wrong? Know right? You know what is wrong? What's that? How the Colts uh, owner has spoken about the Jacksonville Jaguars in the recent uh, news. Uh, <clears throat> so the Colts last season needed to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars to make the playoffs. Okay. The Jaguars at the time had the worst record in the NFL. I think they had won maybe two or three games at the time out of like 16. So the Colts need to win this game. They're playing the worst team in the NFL. They're going to wrap it up. They're going to the playoffs. That didn't happen, Josh. Jaguars beat the Colts. And uh, the ja- <laughs> the Jets, uh, the Colts owner, Jim Ursay went on record after the Week 18 loss that eliminated them from the playoffs. Um, he said, no disrespect to Jacksonville. But I mean, they're the worst team in the league. That was the quote. Whoa. End quote. Uh, Whoa. So I was gonna say that's just like you know how like he says he says no disrespect. It's like you can say with all due respect before you if you as long as you say with all due respect you can say anything you want after that. No disrespect, but yeah, you're you a know, piece of shit. <laughs> your face looks like warmed over dog shit. Why? No disrespect. <laughs> why? I. I saw that article and I was like, why? Like, it's the truth. Like, he, yeah, they sucked. They shouldn't have lost to them. You don't say that. You exactly. don't about another <laughs> NFL franchise. That is such a bad look. Uh, this is the, this is the same owner. I think Jim Ursay was caught with like, and I, I'm not, I don't know for sure, but I'm almost, I think he got caught. I like, with drugs, like, like at a traffic stop. I'm not sure if it was him, so I don't want to get sued. So <laughs> I don't know what happened with that, but it's, this is the same guy who was like made some bad life decisions in the past. And he's making another bad life decision by making this comment. So I don't know. You just don't make that comment. Yeah. I mean, I, I got shit back when I tried to get into football. My favorite team was the Miami dolphins. So dolphins, <laughs> dolphins are on the rise, man. The dolphins almost back got Tom Brady. Brady. Back then, they were not. Uh, Josh, the yeah. Dolphins almost got Tom Brady in the offseason this year. But Tom Which Brady... is that, the oldest or youngest Brady? <laughs> Tom Brady is like the greatest NFL quarterback of all time. And I used to hate him, but he's got seven world championships. He almost went to the Dolphins in the offseason, but 
he got cock blocked by the Buccaneers because he retired from the Bucks. He was like trying to weasel his way to the Dolphins, and uh, the Bucks are like, "No, you're just going to stay retired. We're not letting you go to my. We're not going like it's not going to happen. If you're going to play <laughs> football again, you're going to play with us." Was he the guy that retired for, like, 45 days? Yes, yeah, and Peyton Manning sent him a heartfelt letter. Uh, Peyton Manning actually played for the Colts before, uh, for Jim Irsay, the guy we just talked about. He sent him a heartfelt letter and a really nice bottle of wine and a bunch of other stuff, and Peyton Manning's like, when Tom Brady announced that he was coming out of his retirement, Peyton Br- Manning's like, I want the letter back. I want the wine back. I, I, this is <laughs> he's teasing, but... Hey, Leno like, did the same thing, man. He He had his final episode of The Tonight Show came back did a big, did a big send-off for him all the hard work conan put in took over the show then they give uh, jay leno like a 10 30 slot or 10 o'clock show like after the local news and it bombs and he's like hey, hey i want to take back the tonight show and conan gets screwed over he and he goes back screwed over conan i oh, remember that fuck jay leno i'm saying that right now I'm, i might get some hate for that but fuck that motherfucker so um, so you're saying we'll never have Jay Leno on as a guest on this show? Exactly. Yeah, I can't really do a David voice of him anyway. You know, he sucked ass. Um, Conan got fucked. The one guy that came out smelling like roses on that one was Jimmy Fallon. You know, because that guy should have been on the late show for like 12 years before getting the Tonight Show. Uh, but Jay Leno retired, came back six months later, did like, what, like nine, ten months? And Jimmy Fallon and then, slipped right in. And then he, and then he had another retirement show and Jimmy Fallon got moved up. So yeah, I, I compare the Tom Brady thing to Jay Leno. Um, yeah. But you know, I wanted, I wanted to end the show on happy stuff tonight. Not cause we've ended every episode. I know we're not ending it right now. We're about to go into the final, final <laughs> segment stuff, but so we don't talk about this at the end of the show later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nobody died this time. There's that's the first episode. We're not talking about a celebrity death. Okay. But did you hear about Bruce Willis? His career's over. I did hear about Bruce Willis, and based on the movies he had made in the least in the last couple of years, I thought his career was already over. Uh, he, he's got dementia. It's just like a form of dementia. He's going to lose the the ability to talk, uh, to communicate, to understand English, to write English, to write anything. And it's my, really sad. My friend, one of my good friends, his uncle. Uh, got the same exact thing that Bruce Willis has and it's not good. Yeah. It's I'm just telling you guys right now it's not good. It's uh, not, I thought Vin Diesel's had it for like twenty years. No, he just but he, he just, just he has no range as an actor, is that what you're saying? Like no he, he mumbles, but No, but he what Bruce Willis has, I if you didn't know what it actually is, it's like it's like Alzheimer's. It's like it's like a very advanced. It's fast acting too. It, it's worse because you still know who you are a little yeah. bit, and you can't communicate. You can't. So definitely, he had an amazing career. He really did. Yeah, uh, hey, se- <laughs> Pulp Fiction, Die Hard, Sin City, Last Man Standing, um, Invincible. Like- Unbreakable, not invincible. Unbreakable. Uh, I listen. Bruce Willis, one of Luke the all talking. time. <laughs> Luke, who's talking? Last Boy Scout. He's been in so many movies that I've loved. Uh, so thank you, Bruce Willis, for all the times you've entertained me. You've <laughs> amazing. Uh, I hate that him and his family are having to deal with that, but I didn't want to like talk about it later in the show okay. and end on that. Because this is right. the first episode, unless something happens in like the next thirty minutes, and we lose like another famous awesome person. Okay, I think we're covered on this well, one. Can I so. get to the last sports story of the night so you don't depress me before I say it? <laughs> that okay. Yes. I wanted. All that's right. what I wanted to do is get that out of the way. All right, Tiger Woods is playing in the Masters this week. He actually played today. Uh, this is a huge deal, Josh, because Tiger Woods last year almost died in a car wreck. Oh, he did. And he almost died in a car wreck last year, and his it was so bad that they almost had to amputate one of his legs. Uh, Tiger Woods is one. Of, Tiger Woods is if he's not the greatest golfer of all time, he's top three. Okay, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, Tiger Woods. He's had his off the fee, off the golf course issues. He's a human being. I've never been that famous. 
I've never been in a micro uh, a fishbowl. I actually was in a, a slight fishbowl with all the comments, and I didn't handle it that well this week. So I can't imagine Tiger what like what he has gone through. Okay, so he's made some bad decisions, but he's a good father. He has two kids. He's a great father too. Uh, him playing in the Masters this year after almost dying and having his leg amputated last year. I don't care if he even finishes the tournament. It inspires me. I love this kind of stuff. So, yeah. That's Tiger awesome. Woods, you're the man. If you That's watch the show, which you never will, we salute you. You're the man. <clears throat> salute. Right yeah, there. so big, big props to Tiger Woods. If you guys uh, catch this episode before the Masters is over, hopefully he's playing on Sunday and he's in competition for the for the jacket. Uh, last, So that was the last sports story of the episode. We're, we talked a little bit about WrestleMania. Uh, Stone Cold beat Kevin Owens. Uh, Vince took the worst stunner ever. Uh, I also have one other uh, WWF story to talk about, kind of a pro wrestling story before we end sports. Okay. I had, I had sent you the story earlier this week. Uh, WWE Hall of Famer, they, they credit her as the first diva ever. Tammy Lynn Sitch, a.k.a. Sonny, yeah. uh, was involved in an accident earlier last week where she was driving at a high rate of speed in her Mercedes and rear ended a Kia. The Kia went into another car in front of it. Uh, the person in the Kia died when they were, when they arrived at the hospital, Tammy Sitch was also uh, brought to the hospital with injuries. Um, the only reason Tammy Sitch isn't in jail right now is because they took a sample of her blood. They suspect that she was under the influence of alcohol um, they're waiting on the toxicology reports. They want to know if she was in fact under the influence and if she was, it's going to be vehicular manslaughter and she's probably going to go to, you know, go to court. She's going to be, she's going to face some serious charges and there's major potential for her going to jail for life. And this is really sad and never needed to happen. This would be her seventh DWI in her life, she's went to countless um, rehabs that the WWE has paid for. For some reason, she just cannot get her life back on track. And everybody, uh, Jason Solomon, Solomonster, he's got a podcast that I listen to. It's really popular, Solomonster. He's a, a big wrestling guy. He's pre he predicted this. He basically said it's going to come to a point where she's going to kill somebody. And it looks like she has killed somebody. So... I think it's terrible. I think if you have that much money, because she was making, she's not in wrestling anymore, but she was making tons of money with her OnlyFans account. She had an OnlyFans account. She was doing personal adult videos for fans and stuff. She's driving a Mercedes Benz. Okay. Get an Uber. Get a taxi cab. Exactly. Get a Lyft. I saw her on a uh, shoot interview not too long ago, and she just looked like a train wreck. She was listing wrestlers she hadn't slept with. Instead of, you know, instead of wrestlers that she had slept with, it was wrestlers that she hadn't. And it was like a very short list. Like, it, it was sad. It, it's like she was, she was degrading herself for entertainment. You know what I mean? It was, a lot of yeah, people struggle like, leaving that world behind, and I think she's really struggled with it. She, like, she was given the keys to the kingdom in the mid nineties. And this was back in the internet, like the early internet days. She was like the most downloaded person on the internet in the nineties, mm -hmm. like American online. Like it was a big deal. Um, it was like a world record. Like so, I, remember, I remember the raw magazine coming out with her on the cover. And as a 12 year old, that was like gold to me. I was like, this is the greatest magazine I've ever seen in my life. And I need to be alone with this magazine because I really need to give it the attention it deserves. You know what I'm saying? Like, really give it the attention it deserves. Um, I had pictures. I had hundreds of pictures cut out from magazines of Sunny plastered all over my bedroom walls as a kid. She was uh, in one of the biggest feuds, too. You remember the, the, the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart thing? She, uh, the Sunny Days? Uh, she, wasn't, Shawn Michaels. she was involved off screen. They yeah, didn't have like they brought her in to make it. They brought in real life stuff to like yeah. really intensify the story to sell it. The sunny days comment. Well, is one you of know the what the comments. You know what the ridiculous thing about that is. It, Brett wasn't the one who was sleeping with Sunny. Was Sean David. was. Oh yeah, Sean. Oh yeah, Sean. Yeah. Sean was sleep, so was Bulldog. So was 
she slept with a ton of guys backstage, uh, allegedly. That she came from her own mouth that she said she did. So I guess it's not alleged. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler hit the zigzag on her a couple times. <laughs> so a lot of like, wrestlers. You said came from her mouth. I'm sorry. I thought you said something else at first about a hey, thrust. She she put over a lot of wrestlers. Okay. She took a lot of finishing moves from some of the big time superstars in the early nineties. Okay. A lot, a lot of wrestlers came in uh, from her mouth. Uh, she hey she had her sh- shoulders pinned to the mat one two three by a lot of the big. Stu- she did the honors for a lot of the superstars back then. And she holds, and she still holds the world record for the most uh, orgasms in an hour, uh, and that, that's sports. <laughs> um, let's get into. Uh, so we're not going to call. So since you correct me every episode when I say horror news, we're going to call it spooky news. It's not horror <laughs> news anymore. Not horror news. No, okay. we're going into spooky news because if it was horror news, we would have brought the sunny story up. I just in horror news. Up. Yeah. Okay, we're doing spooky news. So I have one story for spooky news for episode number five. You ready for I this? Want, I got one too. When you're, yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, here's my story. An it pre-equal series is in the works at HBO Max. The series is currently called Welcome to Dairy and will begin in the 1960s in the yeah. time leading up to the events of It Part One, the 2017 film based on Stephen King's horror novel. The story is also said to include the origin story of Pennywise the Clown. What are your thoughts on that, Josh? I've always thought it would be cool to see, like, him over the de- over the centuries. Uh, you know, like how he showed up in the pictures from the 1800s and stuff. And, yeah, the, uh, where all they back to the, the, the book and his yeah, and stuff. Yeah, even all the way back to the uh, creation of the, the, the signing of the, t- the town of Derry and everything. So, yeah, I think, that, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I'm actually, I'm, 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 I'm going to give that one a try. Uh, when I, it comes out, if they can get Bill Skarsgård to come back and play Pennywise, Star, yeah, that would be awesome. I would definitely love, be into that. I would love to see uh, our original Pennywise. Uh, so yeah, it would just be cool to see Tim Curry, you know, as a cameo or something, some some something in the TV series. But I would like to see that. He's kind of already in the 2017 movie. He's in the room where Richie uh, Pennywise jumps out at him. There's a bunch of toy clowns, stuffed clowns in the room. The, okay. There's a design. There's one of the stuffed clowns looks exactly like the 1990 miniseries Pennywise in that room. Kids nowadays call that one boring, but it's still my all time favorite. I love the miniseries. Uh, I thought I thought it was creepier that they didn't try to make it look like a scary clown. You know what I mean? It made him scarier looking the way he did. Um, I thought Scar's got did good, though. He was subtly scary. He had, like, a rounder a rounder cranium, like a rounder head. Uh, the makeup was kind of, like, slightly off-settling, you know, off-putting. Uh, but it was like you could see the appeal why a kid would talk to him. Because the one... <laughs> Scar's guard is terrifying the whole time. He's... <laughs> He's completely creepy the entire time. You know, in the Gunslinger book series, uh, the Gunslinger and his teammate, one of his partners comes across like a sibling of Pennywise's creature, like another mm-hmm. breed, like one of that breed. Yeah. But it, 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 it feeds off of laughter, uh, and it, it keeps people alive for a while, making them laugh and it feed, until they die. And it, it was a, kind of a cool, cool throwback to that. I had, a, I had a quick horror story. I'm going to make it quick uh, for people that play Dead by Daylight or know about the game. There is an anniversary coming up, the six-year anniversary. On the fourth anniversary of the video game, they released Pyramid Head, a Silent Hill chapter. And they subtly teased that it was going to be that because the number four on the an- four-year anniversary logo before they announced it, mm-hmm. who the killer was, looked like Pyramid Head's head. And then the fifth anniversary last year looked like the Resident Evil 5-5. Five, five. And this year, the six in the logo looks like the curled-up Xenomorph uh, from the... You've probably seen that, like the Aliens logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, the number six looks like that. So they're talking... There's a chance it might be a Xenomorph as the new killer in Dead by Daylight. And the power is going to have something to do with lockers. And, like, I made this, I put out this thing on the Dead by Daylight forums and Twitter and stuff, like, a year and a half ago, 
saying you guys should have a killer that can like go into a locker on one side of the map and like portal out of another or reach through if somebody's hiding in one they can like open any locker on the map and grab that survivor through anyways the next killer whoever it is xenomorph or whatever is going to have a locker based power so if it ends up being what I said I'm going to plaster all those posts and stuff I made and say, ha, it was me. I came up with that. See, I don't want to check. I I don't want to check. I just want to be like, it's kind of cool. Because they do say they they listen to the community. If they see a good idea, they run with it. So, um, Dude, I could have used, when I was in grade school or going to junior high from grade school, I could have used some locker-based powers because I had, like, no idea how to remember my combo. So I had to write it down in my Trapper Keeper, like the first, you know, piece of paper in my Trapper Keeper out all my combos. I could have used hated, some locker um, powers back then. I hated to turn three this way and four that way. It's like, can't, why can't we just use a key? Or have one of the locker, co- like, instead of having one of the old spinny ones, like, have one, like, that's on a bike lock and you just push it <laughs> left or right to whatever number. Like, I was having a hard enough time not sweating and stinking like hell because I'm going through puberty now all of a sudden. Like, I had a lot, enough problems. I had more problems having braces and being a fat kid and being loud than having to remember five locker combinations or even how to open the damn thing. Man, I'm sorry. Like, shit, whenever I was in school, there was this contest for uh, Nintendo. Shasta Cola had these Mario, like Mario, Princess, Luigi, and Bowser drink uh, the cans. They'd have them on there, different flavors for each character. Yeah. And if you opened your can and at the bottom saw a picture of Mario... You won a Nintendo and every Nintendo game ever made. Well, I took the address for the sweepstakes, and I, I got my mom to get me one of those, uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now, the big artist pads, the big tall ones that you open up, and you you know you have all the pages you can paint or draw on. Like an and, uh, Or like, I don't well, know. It's like, like a pad, like it's okay. like a giant notebook thing, but for painting anyways. I made an entire Super Mario Brothers 4 game, like drew it out and crude like fifth grade handwriting and uh, drawing pictures of, you know, like the castle, the the airships, the levels, my own version. And yeah. I mailed it. I mailed that to the sweepstakes address, hoping that Nintendo would turn it into a video game. That's how gullible I was in fifth grade. I said, Wait a minute. You mailed game. that? How did the hell did you mail that? How heavy was that? If, you, if it was that big? It was it was big. it was about you know about it was it was one of those big art pads you know and it yeah, my, my mom my mom helped me mail it off we, we just got it in a big went to the post office a big box thing and wrote the address and shipped it. Are you sure that and, she didn't say Josh I'm going to mail this for you you can stay home and she just no, I was stuck it in the garbage I was, can. I was with her, so uh, somebody got it. Josh, <laughs> of course I'll mail this gigantic, uh, you know video game design you did. Of course I will. I, I, I don't care that it costs $47 to mail this thing that they're never going to use. Of course, Josh. You just stay here and have some ecto cooler and comb your locks and put your butterfly clips in your hair and I'll go mail this. Ah, she mailed it my she ass. Did, she did mail it. I was there. But like looking back, I feel really stupid about it. But it's kind of kid I was. I thought I was hopeful. Anyways. How dare you be creative and have uh, wonder, wonder and uh, an imagination as a child? How dare you? You should apologize for that. I, I apologize to the world for that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Chucky got uh, renewed for a season two, the TV series. I haven't watched it yet, so no spoilers, anybody. I haven't seen it. But I do know that okay, season two is going to bring back Glenn and Glenda. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, i got to check the show out. got to give it a try. Hey, uh, that's our horror roundup, right? Yeah, it's the hor- that's the spooky news. Spooky news now. Because <laughs> I'm tired of you making fun of me when I say horror. Horror. All right, let's get into some headlines. Let's, we're, we're on the green mile of episode number five. And the first headline of the night, Josh, country music star Eric Church canceled one of his concerts last week so he could attend the University of North Carolina Duke Final Four game. And he didn't lie about it. He didn't say he was sick. He didn't say any BS. He said exactly why he was canceling the, t- the concert and what he was going to go do instead. If you wow. were going to go to that concert, would you be mad if he canceled yeah. it because of that? Oh, yeah. 
the way ticket prices are now, and like uh, last week with John Oliver, he even did an episode on like Ticketmaster and stuff and how expensive ticket prices are because yeah. of all the people getting a cut from it <clears throat> and how it's like non-refundable in most cases. Hell yeah, I'd be pissed off. I'd, yeah. I'd be pissed off too. And I think, I'm not sure if he, I think I saw something where he was going to uh, put on another show where they could attend it uh, down the road or he was going to refund it. But he just straight up, 100% honesty, I'm going to this basketball game, not going to my own concert. I mean, I've never Aaron seen anyone Church. be that transparent. Garth Brooks, he's not. You know, Garth Brooks might have got away with something like that. But uh, Eric Church yeah. isn't no. quite as Teflon. Dude, Garth Brooks put out a pop album as Chris Gaines, an alter ego. He was going to make a movie. In all fairness, it was going to be a movie, and it just never happened. No, <laughs> so he, even, he hosted Saturday Night Live as Chris Gaines. Or he hosted yeah. Garth Brooks, and the musical guest was Chris Gaines. It was going to be a movie about a, a, a rock singer named Chris Gaines, and it just never got made. So all that stuff, stupidest <laughs> idea ever. I don't he, I don't know what, who came up with that idea. I don't know if he was just sick and tired of making country music. I don't know if he artistically wanted to do something different. Whatever the reason, Garth Brooks, that was a major fuck up. Bad <laughs> idea. Okay, I'm sure. In retrospect, knows. it's a bad idea. At the time, it was a bad idea. I want to talk to whoever's idea that was because I, I need to – if we can ever get Chris Gaines or Garth Brooks on the show, we need to pick his brain about that because that was a dumbass idea. Or get both of them. I've never seen Chris Gaines and Garth Brooks in the room at the same time. So Me, me, me neither. It might be the same guy. I don't but know. Don't feel bad, Garth, because once I made and designed Mario Brothers 4 and Nintendo completely ignored it. So. Yeah. And his mom, he he claims his mom said that uh, she went down to the post office and mailed it, even though it weighed I like 100 pounds. Her. I was with her. It had like 30 stamps on the front of it by the time we were done. All right. I believe you think you were there. I believe it. Okay. Maybe maybe she knew the person at the post office and said like, hey, hey, pretend like we're mailing this for little Joshie over there. Uh, I want to keep the wonderment alive for a little bit longer. That's the That's why you are the way you are right now. You know that? That's the why you behave the way you do. I ate twenty boxes of popsicles one time <laughs> because it had a it had a contest that you could find something on the stick and win a bunch of games. Oh man! And I was convinced I was going to win. That'd be worth it. I had a lot of wonder and hope as a child. No, it, it died. It died. It's all no, it gone. didn't. No, it didn't because you won two ecto coolers. It did not end. I you're still, still you're still I doing sure the did. same thing. It didn't end. It's worse. And it I did never and end. I still, I sent picture proof to Alex yeah. about that. Only like yeah. ninety people won, and I yeah. got two of them. Yeah, you, you didn't. You never stopped. You just lied to the slashaholics. You said you, that's why it ended. It never ended. It got worse with age. I'm sorry. Apologize paid, to everybody it, for lying. It paid off. It, I'm not apologizing because it paid off. I got two ecto coolers when only like ninety other people got one. So, well, you know who should be apologizing? The man in the second story here. Okay, now, Arizona man. Philip Vasti uh, was actually had to be rescued on two consecutive days while hiking in the northern Arizona mountains. He was rescued two straight days. Uh, another hiker was quoted as saying it was very apparent he wasn't prepared for the climate and that he uh, and he had no idea what he was doing or what he got himself into. So the Look at Mr. Day, Ballin story. Yeah, I was, dude, on my notes. Uh, you can't see it, but it says potential Mr. Ballin story right there. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. This guy is it an does. idiot. Yeah. Like, uh, it says potential Mr. Ballin story is one of the things I had highlighted on the rundown. Uh, great minds think alike. No, he. so the first night, he just got lost. He just completely got lost, and the, he had to be rescued because I think he had his cell phone with him. Uh, the second night... After he gets rescued the first night, he goes out again, and this time he falls and gets hurt and then has to get rescued again. <laughs> you left out the most important part of the story. What is it? The reason he got lost the first time is that he was going to the Eric Church contest, showed up, and nobody was there, so he thought he was at the wrong place. Yeah. So he cut through the woods to try to find the right venue and got lost. The second night, he was needing some privacy to break the world record in orgasms. And uh, got lost. He so. got lost on his way to greatness. On his way to immortality, going for that 17th orgasm, he blacked out because of lack of fluids in his body. 
and Robin Williams as the genie from Disney's Aladdin came out of his dick <laughs> at the end. No, how may I help you, Master? Uh, like nothing came out. Just it looked like he was blowing the dust off of a library book uh, in an is, old <laughs> in an old library. Like he just changed the song "Friend in Me" to "Friend in You." Yeah, <laughs> you've got a friend in you, <laughs> dude. Yeah, you never, you never had a friend like me. Seventeen uh, orgasms. Your penis would look like a paint by numbers by the end of that. It would be. <laughs> It would look like a topographical map of the title the of continental episode. United States. It would look awful. Horrible. Um, that being said, let's get into the last headline of the night, last story of the show. Episode number five is coming to a close. And this is one of my favorite stories of the night. Um, director Amy Heckerling. She is the lady who is responsible for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Okay, She directed Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Major cult classic film. Came out in the early 80s. Uh, she has stated that Phoebe Cates, that, you know, she's naked on the pool scene. For Judge Reinhold sees her naked on the pool, right? Yeah. Okay. She stated to overcome, over, to help overcome Phoebe's fear of doing the topless scene, she assured the actress, Phoebe Cates, it would only be for a few seconds... And since it's only for a few seconds, not many people would have time to be able to stare. Okay? Pause. <laughs> Ironically, in the following years from the movie's release, the videotape industry started to boom. So VHS tapes started to explode. Yeah, but people that, when VHS tapes first came out, nobody owned them because they were super expensive. You had to, my dad used to rent a VHS player. He didn't buy one, he rented one. We so did that before. Yeah, they're, they were super expensive. Not a lot of people could even get VHS tapes. So VHS starts to become more affordable, starts to blow up. Well, what do people do once they get their, their hands on this Phoebe Cates scene? They start pausing it, okay? So it became an industry-wide joke, like open joke, that any copy of Fast Times at Ridgemont High would have major wear and tear on the scene where she's topless from all of these people that have rented the, the movie, you know, throughout the years and th whatever, pausing it at that exact scene. So she built up the guts to go topless because it's only for a few seconds. No one's going to be able to stare. Ironically, it became the most stared at scene in the history of VHS tapes. That's what the pause button was invented for, that scene right there. Uh, and that's why VHS beat Beta because they didn't put that movie out on Betamax. Yeah, and also... I think that Phoebe Cates is probably responsible for a lot of record attempts at the orgasm record, I'm sure. A lot we've of attempts. Come full circle. We've come full yeah. circle. A lot of attempts were made at the record while watching Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Josh, that's it. In the show, that's buddy. It. This has been Slash Tracks Action News with Alex Vanover and Josh LaRue. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Good night, everybody. Good night, America. Good night. Other countries, I'm sure I could think of the names if I took the time. Be excellent to each other. Any closing remarks, man? Mahalo, dog. <laughs>